Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about the natural log of negative numbers. Yes, negative numbers and we're going to be using the Euler's formula to prove that. Okay, let's start with an easy example, the natural log of negative 2. Natural log of negative 2. We can write this as the natural log of negative 1 times 2. And by the property of logs, we can write this as the natural log of minus 1 plus the natural log of 2. And we're going to be using the fact that minus 1 is i square. So we can write this as natural log of i square plus the natural log of 2. Taking the 2 outside because that's another property of logs. And using Euler's formula, we can write i as e to the power i pi by 2. I'm going to talk about this more in detail uh, later at the end of the video. So now, uh, substituting this in, we have the natural log of e to the power i pi by 2 plus the natural log of 2, which gives us uh, the natural log and e uh, get cut out. So all we're left with is 2 times i pi by 2 plus the natural log of 2. And this gives us our answer for the natural log of negative numbers. But this is assuming that we can take the values to a complex plane. So let's generalize this for the natural log of ne all negative numbers. Let's say minus m. So we can write this as the natural log of minus 1 plus the natural log of m. And this becomes 2 times the natural log of i plus the natural log of m and this becomes i pi plus the natural log of m and this is the generalized version for all negative numbers minus m uh, again this is assuming we can take the values to complex plane okay guys now let's talk about the Euler's formula so we're going to be using the Taylor series expansion for e to the power x which is 1 plus x upon 1 factorial plus x square upon 2 factorial plus x cube upon 3 factorial and so on and we're also going to be using the Taylor polynomial expansion for cos x which is 1 minus x square by 2 factorial plus x to the power 4 by 4 factorial minus x to the power 6 by 6 factorial and so on and we're also going to be using the Taylor polynomial expansion for sin x, which is x minus x cubed 3 factorial plus x to the power 5 by 5 factorial and so on. Now this is where most physicists get their approximation for sin x as x. They just take the first term in the Taylor polynomial expansion. Yes, we all hate physicists. Okay, moving on. Replacing ix with x, we get 1 plus ix upon 1 factorial plus ix whole square upon 2 factorial plus ix whole cube upon 3 factorial and so on. So now if we just look at these terms, it will be 1 plus ix plus i square x square upon 2 factorial plus i cube x cube upon 3 factorial and so on. Now if we Take i square is minus 1, we will get 1 plus ix minus x square by 2 factorial. And uh, here we can uh, write i cube as i square times i. So you'll get minus i x cube upon 3 factorial and so on. Now if you can see, this is basically uh, the expansion of cos x plus the expansion of sin x. But... Uh, in the terms of the expansion of sin x, there's an extra i. So you can go ahead and write the whole thing, but I'm just going to summarize it. So this is what we get. Cos x plus i sin x. If you just group like uh, group the non-i terms and the i terms, this is what we get. And uh, this is Euler's formula. I've written it in terms of e to the power i x but it's most commonly expressed in the terms of e to the power i theta. It's the same concept. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about the most famous formula or also referred to as the most beautiful formula in maths. e to the i pi plus 1 is equal to 0. 
okay e to the i pi let's plug pi in as x in the formula we derived uh, before this we will get cos pi plus i sine pi and sine pi is zero and cos pi is minus one so we're just left with minus one so we have e to the i pi plus one is equal to zero Okay guys, now I'm going to help you visualize e to the power i theta in a complex plane. So let's start out by drawing our complex axes here. So this is our real axis and this is our imaginary axis. So let's take any point, say 1. Let this be 1. So this is our point on the real axis in the complex plane. Okay, so now we all know that e to, uh, e to the power x has the property that its derivative is itself, right? And this is probably the defining property of e to the power x. But now if we have e to the power i x, the derivative of that is i times e to the power i x. And uh, we know that i is e to the power i pi by 2. So this basically becomes e to the power i pi by 2 times e to the power i x. So now we can add the powers and get i times pi by 2 plus x. So this basically increases the angle by pi by 2 radians or 90 degrees every time we take a derivative. So let's say we are here right now. This is our vector. So when we take a derivative of this, uh, we're going to end up looking something like this because of the 90 degree rotation. So e to the power 0 is 1. But when we take the derivative of e to the power x at e to the power i x at x equal to 0, we're going to end up with e to the power i pi by 2 plus x, which is e to the power i pi by 2 and that we all know is i. So we're going to be here i. This will be the vector. This was just for representation. So just like that, every time you take a derivative at any x, we have to first take a rotation for 90 degrees because we have to multiply by i every time we take a derivative. This is this extra information about e to the power i x and I thought you guys would enjoy it. That's all we have for today, guys. I hope you guys liked the video. Please like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. Thanks for watching.